Today on Chemistry Perspectives, nitrous oxide, aka laughing gas. Once hailed as a miracle anesthetic, this gas is now often frowned upon despite its many possible uses. Given that this is the 250th year since its discovery, let us examine how we got here, and more importantly, why. Nitrous oxide is actually a surprisingly simple molecule made up of only three atoms, two nitrogen and one oxygen. The structure is quite simple as well. All three atoms are arranged in a straight line with covalent bonds linking them together. When we talk about molecules, there are always different ways of drawing them, representing them. At least in the case with, of nitrous oxide, there are actually three different alternative bonding structures. And what we find is that no matter the bonding structure, it's still the same molecule with the same properties. We have to remember that it's the underlying molecular structure that gives the chemical its properties. So, what are these properties? First of all, it's invisible. You can't see it. However, it is distinguished by its characteristic aroma, described as a slightly sweet or metallic smell and taste. It's also heavier than air, so I'd be able to hold some in a beaker like this and actually pour it into another container like water. But of course, we don't store it like that. We actually store it under pressure in tanks like this because um, the nitrous oxide's gas properties lend it very well to compression. But you have to be careful around this gas because if you heat it up enough, it will disassociate violently and effectively explode. You don't want to be around when that happens. That's not all. It's commonly known that nitrous oxide can speed up combustion reactions and, of course, be used as a narcotic. Within the first second of you breathing in this gas, it starts to displace the air in your lungs, leading to uncontrollable laughter from lack of oxygen. Furthermore, through a process still unknown, it makes its way to your brain, where it stimulates feelings of euphoria and pain relief. Doctors call this type of anesthesia disassociative because it creates a mental dissociation between what a person is feeling and what is actually happening. See, because there is this dark side to uh, this form of pain release that if you were bashed, if you were high on nitrous and you, you were to be bashed in the leg, uh, you literally wouldn't know what hit you. You could be bleeding and not feel it. But of course, doctors look for these characteristics in anesthetic drugs. It should thus come as no surprise that the medical sector is one of the top users of nitrous oxide. I'm sure you have the image in your mind of the dentist with his laughing gas, or have even experienced the nitrous high at the hands of one of these practitioners. Nitrous oxide gives the perfect blend of pain relief and sedation to the fearful or anxious yet cooperative patient. It is easy to procure, easy to administer, and there are no known long-term side effects from medical use. As we touched on earlier, nitrous oxide can be used as a form of narcotic, which is no surprise, seeing as it makes you high. However, you might be surprised by the extent to which this substance is abused. Small canisters of compressed N2O are sold on streets around the world. People will puncture the canisters and use them to fill up balloons from which to inhale the gas. Even though possession of nitrous oxide is legal in most parts of the world, there are questions about its safety. There's an ongoing controversy over the safety of nitrous oxide, especially in the context of recreational use. Since there are valid arguments for each side, this debate is far from settled. Additionally, nitrous oxide has several very specific industrial applications. For one, it is used in the production of various synthetic chemicals. If you look at this molecule, it's oxygen and nitrogen, some of the most common elements, in a form that will decompose uh, into its constituent atoms when the temperature is right. So you start to see in a lot of chemical synthesis operations, the use of N2O as an ingredient. There are many more uses of this wonderful substance. 
to name a few, as a fuel oxidizer in racing cars and rocket engines, soil treatment products, and as a propellant gas in compressed food cans. There's a funny story about this. In several brands of canned whipped cream, the nitrous oxide propellant is stored in a little capsule called a charger. Now, somewhere along the line, someone had the brilliant idea of extracting these chargers and inhaling nitrous oxide from them. You start to see concerned parents wondering if their teenagers are doing whippets, as they say, and completely overblown news stories about shopkeepers asking for ID from anyone wanting to buy whipped cream. While it may be easy to get one's hands on nitrous oxide from industrial, medical, and whipped cream sources, this gas is actually quite common in nature in certain types of soil. There are even trace amounts of it in the air around us. There are several ways to produce nitrous oxide artificially, but the easiest and safest way that you can even do at home is to take ammonium nitrate and gently heat it up. The ammonium nitrate will decompose into nitrous oxide and water vapor, which can be collected in a jug. Another way to do it is to add iron fillings to nitric acid and collect the gas that is released. That's actually how Joseph Priestley first produced nitrous oxide back in 1772. It's a fascinating story to which I was first exposed through Sam Keane's brilliant book, Caesar's Last Breath which tells the stories of the gases that make up the air around us. Basically, gases with special properties were a bit of a fad among British high society in the late 1700s. Soon after its discovery, nitrous oxide gained quite the following. But, as I learned, the greatest driver to nitrous oxide's enduring popularity was this pneumatic institute, founded by this fellow, Thomas Beddoes. At this institute, and with the help of the scientists James Watt and Humphrey Davy, they would perform all manner of experiments using different gases to treat all manner of ailments. And they drew on these experiments, holding epic demonstrations and parties, as you see. But while Beddoes became known as a crackpot, the reputation of nitrous oxide's effects spread far and wide. In 1844, it was first used as an anesthetic, and it has been used as such by doctors and dentists ever since. The negative effects of nitrous oxide on humans are numerous, including but not limited to throat irritation, seizures, and even hallucinations. And there's another, even more pernicious danger associated with this gas. It contributes to global warming. Nitrous oxide makes up a shocking 6% of greenhouse gas emissions, at least in the United States. And it is actually hundreds of times more potent a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. While the vast majority of this comes from agriculture and industry, and people like you or I have little control over those emissions, it's still important to be informed about these things. Sorry to end this video on such a sad note. It just goes to show the sheer range of effects that gases can have on people and the world around them. This is a fact that many of us have probably never thought much about, and that's probably the whole point of this gases video project anyway. Well, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching.